Section 10 of Greatest Wonders of the World. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Greatest Wonders of the World, edited by Esther Singleton. Fingal's Cave 2 by John Keats. I am puzzled how to give you an idea of Staffa. It can only be represented by a first-rate drawing. One may compare the surface of the island to a roof. This roof is supported by grand pillars of basalt standing together as thick as honeycombs. The finest thing in Fingal's cave, it is entirely a hollowing out of basalt pillars. Suppose now the giants, who rebelled against Jove, had taken a whole mass of black columns and bound them together like bunches of matches, and then, with immense axes, had made a cavern in the body of these columns. Of course, the roof and floor must be composed of broken ends of the columns. Such is Fingal's cave, except that the sea has done the work of excavations and is continually dashing there, so that we walk along the sides of the cave on the pillars which are left as if for convenient stairs. The roof is arched somewhat gothic-wise, and the length of some of the entire side pillars is fifty feet. About the island you might see an army of men, each on a pillar. The length of the cave is a 120 feet, and from its extremity the view into the sea, through the large arch at the entrance, the colour of the columns is a sort of black with a lurking gloom of purple therein. For solemnity and grandeur it far surpasses the finest cathedral. At the extremity of the cave there is a small perforation into another cave, at which the waters meeting and buffeting each other, there is sometimes produced a report as of a cannon heard as far as Iona, which must be twelve miles. As we approached in the boat, there was such a fine swelling of the sea that the pillars appeared rising immediately out of the crystal but it is impossible to describe it. Not Aladdin's Magian ever such a work began. Not the Wizard of the Dee ever such a dream could see. Not St. John in Patmos Isle, in the passion of his toil, when he saw the church's seven golden isle built up in heaven, gazed at such a rugged wonder. As I stood its roofing under, lo, I saw one sleeping there, on the marble cold and bare. While the surges washed his feet, and his garments white did beat, drenched about the sombre rocks, on his neck his well-grown locks, lifted dry above the main were upon the curl again what is this and what art thou whispered i and touched his brow what art thou and what is this whispered i and strove to kiss the spirit's hand to wake his eyes up he started in a trice I am Lysidas, said he, famed in funeral minstrelsy. This was architected thus by the great Oceanus. Here his mighty waters play hollow organs all the day. Here by turns his dolphins all, finny palmers great and small, come to pay devotion due each a mouth of pearls must strew many a mortal of these days dares to pass our sacred ways dares to touch audaciously this cathedral of the sea i have been the pontiff priest where the waters never rest 
where a fledgy seabird choir soars for ever holy fire i have hid from mortal man proteus is my sacristan but the stupid eye of mortal hath passed beyond the rocky portal so for ever will i leave such a taint and soon unweave all the magic of the place tis now free to stupid face to cutters and to fashion boats to cravats and petticoats the great sea shall war it down for its fame shall not be blown at every farthing's quadrille dance so saying with a spirit's glance he dived i am sorry i am so indolent as to write such stuff as this it can't be helped the western coast of scotland is a most strange place it is composed of rocks mountains mountainous and rocky islands intersected by locks you can go but a short distance anywhere from salt water in the highlands letters of john keats london and new york eighteen ninety one end of section ten read by alan mapstone